Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies and today I'm building a very nice but easy to make wine storage rack with drawers. Now you guys have probably seen something along the lines of this project before. A wine rack where the racks are drawers, which allows better access when inserting or removing a bottle, but more importantly, a better view when you want to peruse your selection. As a piece of furniture, I also find the concept a bit more appealing. So when I was recently asked by a customer to make one, I figured this would be a perfect addition to my up and coming plans website. Now in keeping with my vision of giving hobbyists or beginner woodworkers with limited tools the ability to make nicer or more complex pieces of furniture, I sat down to reverse engineer the concept and develop a easy to assemble version. In this video, I'll show you guys what I came up with. Using 19mm or 3 quarter inch laminated pine boards, which come in a variety of sizes, eliminated the need for glue ups and also the need for a jointer, which is a tool that the average hobbyist doesn't own. Instead, using a table saw or even a circular saw to rip up the board into the variety of widths required to make the components of the rack was the first step. And staying with simplicity, I designed this cabinet to only require one of five widths of planks, with the exception of one, but I will get to that in a moment. This also has the added advantage of only having to readjust the table saw fence a handful of times. After ripping the laminated pine boards into the five different widths required for this project, I used my miter saw to size up all the components. Now for some of the components I needed to create quite a few copies, so to speed up the process I clamped bundles together. This also helped me to more accurately copy the components. Now guys, pine is not really the most sought after wood species, but I wanted this project to be customizable to the customer requirements. And using a variety of stains and paints, the project can be made to accentuate the room where it's going to be used. Now I will be building a more complicated version using exotic woods and maybe adding one or two additional features. So if you guys want to see that, remember to subscribe. The third factor in simplifying the assembly of this project is eliminating the need for complicated joining methods. Even things as simple as doweling or pocket holes. Instead, I want to be able to assemble this project using glue and screws only. To do this, I assembled two frames. One for the base and one for the top. To act as a kind of skeleton for the design. This will allow me to fix all the cabinet panels in place by driving screws from the inside or underside of the frame and so concealing the screws. The frames consist of components assembled on three axes, allowing me to fix paneling to the sides, front and back and top of the frame. I added pre-drilled holes to the frames before assembling, which will later be used to fix the panels in place. I then used glue and screws to assemble the frames. To prevent the components from drifting while I screw them together, I clamp them before inserting the screws.
Working with pine can be a bit annoying because it moves a lot, especially if it's not properly dried like so many commercial woods are. So I try to prevent any warping by bracing during the assembly process. Right, so that's one down and one to go. Right, so with the two frames assembled, I can start putting together the cabinet, starting with the two largest side panels. Once again, before screwing, I am securing with clamps to prevent drifting. Right, so that is pretty much it for the basic framework of the cabinet. Very straightforward, two frames and two side panels. Then to conceal the screws visible at the front from the frame assembly, I installed two trim pieces by screwing them in place from the inside of the frame. These are just cosmetic. After the face trim, it was time for the base and cabinet top. Installing these was as simple as fixing them in place with screws from underneath the frames. Right, so as I mentioned earlier, there is one odd one out on the components and that is the cabinet top. It is made to be slightly longer and wider than the cabinet to produce a little bit of an overhang. And that is pretty much it for the cabinet body. As you can see, very simple and just simply screwed together. For this one, I didn't install a backing, but for future versions, I will consider this because it will add additional structural support. Next up is the drawers, starting with the draw frames. Once again, simply screw together. The cabinet is going to consist out of six drawers holding six bottles each for a total of 36, but the design can be easily adapted to increase or decrease its capacity. Into this frame, I'm going to install slats at a spacing slightly narrower than the average wine bottle, creating the wine bottle cradles. But before I install the slats into the frame, I'm softening the edges using my router. A much quicker way would have been to router these edges on the full length planks before cutting them with my mitre saw. But for the purpose of presentation, I'm doing it the long way. Routering the full length planks before cutting to size with the mitre saw would also have been safer. There wouldn't have been a need for me to get my fingers so close to the cutter or I could have even used a trim router. To 
install the drawer slats, I placed the drawer frame upside down with spacer blocks inside. On top of the spacer blocks, I placed the drawer slats. For the narrow slats, I only routed one edge because these will be installed on the edges or the ends of the drawer and only support a bottle at one side. There will then be five wide slats that will support a bottle at both ends for a total of six bottles per drawer. And to ensure that these slats are installed with a uniform spacing, I place spacer blocks between them before fixing them in place. After screwing all the slats in place, I removed all the spaces to use with the assembly of the next drawer. As an alternative to the labor intensive slats, large diameter dowels can be installed into the frames to support the bottles. I prefer the slats because it allows me to play around with the spacing between the bottles. And for my more complicated version, I'm probably going to cover these in felt. Now normally before installing the drawers into the cabinet I would sand and treat everything. In this case however the customer would like to inject their own creativity by painting the cabinet. So I will deliver it as a raw wood product. The next step is installing the runners, so I started with the drawers. To space the runners on the cabinet, I once again made up a spacer block and started installing the rails from the bottom of the cabinet. With the runners installed, the final step was installing the draw faces.
I fixed the draw faces in place from the inside of the drawers to conceal the screws. Right guys, so that is it for my simplified drawed wine rack, a elegant piece of furniture for the everyday wine connoisseur. Now I also like the fact that this design is very adaptable and can be produced using only a handful of basic power tools. Remember guys, I will be posting detailed plans on this project on my up and coming plans website. So if you want to get your hands on them, remember to subscribe. I will be posting an announcement video as soon as the site goes live. But that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a bit out of the ordinary for my channel, but I would love to start sharing a bit more of my non-shop related projects. So if you guys enjoyed it and you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. Then remember guys, you can support my brand or my channel by checking out my merch store or following me on my socials. All the relevant links are down below. And with that comes the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time. Cheers.